Welcome to video number 22, folks, uh, entitled The Dimensions of the Solar System. So, we just finished up talking about Kepler's three laws of planetary motion. That name is a little bit misleading because those laws do more than describe the motions of the planets. They also, for example, describe the motions of comets around the sun and asteroids and also Kepler's three laws of planetary motion also describe the orbit of the moon around the earth. So it doesn't just apply to the planets. Rather, the laws, Kepler's three laws, do not just apply to the planets. They apply to any two bodies that are gravitationally bound to each other. Okay, so they're, they're universal in that sense. They're not just about planets. One of the great things about Kepler's laws is that it allowed us to make a scale model of the solar system. Okay, and that's what we have here. Now notice there's only six circles around the sun. That's because in Kepler's time, we're now in you know, the early 17th century, there were only six known planets. And uh, they knew about, you know, for example, there was Mercury. There was, I've got new pins and I'm very excited about that, but boy, these tops are hard to pull off. There was Venus. There is the Earth. Then there is, dang, that's hard to pull off. Uh, next orbit out was Mars. Beyond that, Jupiter, nice and big. And about beyond that, we had, of course, Saturn which Galileo observed to have what he called ears. He never realized they were rings, but it was known by this time that there was something weird about Saturn. Okay, so we had the six planets, um, Mer Mars, Venus, Earth, Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn. Okay, and what Kepler's laws allowed us to do was to make a scale model of the solar system. Okay, what I mean by that is this. Let me come through here, pick a color, any color, and let's look at let's look at uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Okay, we know. Let's say that the distance between the Earth and the Sun is 1.0, right? This is astronomical units. Remember that term from last lecture, maybe two lectures ago? An astronomical unit is the relative or is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. And we use that as like a meter stick for solar system astronomy. Okay, like if I'm going to be talking about uh, driving around in Georgia, uh, miles works for that. But that's a good unit of distance. We wouldn't use feet for that. We would use a unit of distance that makes sense for that scale, right? So we would use miles when driving around the state. Um, if we are talking about uh, walking around here on campus, we wouldn't use miles, we would use feet. You go about 100 feet that way or 200 feet that way. Again, we would use a sort of unit of distance that makes sense for the campus. We could use miles, but that wouldn't make any sense. It would be harder to, it would be harder to understand. Uh, go 15.15 miles that way. All right. So you pick sort of uh, yardsticks, if you will, that match the situation. For solar system astronomy, our yardstick, our standard unit of length is the astronomical unit AU, and that is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Using AU as a unit, we find that Mars, uh, that Mercury rather, 
is at a distance. Uh, there's no, there's no equal sign here. These are not. I don't need to use equal signs. That's not right. Okay. Uh, Earth is 1.0 AU's. Mar uh, Mercury. That stands for Mercury. Is 0.39 AU. Which tells you that on average, Mercury is about 39% the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The, the distance between Mercury and the Sun is about 39% that of the Earth. For Venus, I think it's 0 .7, 0 0.72, 0 0.72. For Mars, it's 1.5. For Jupiter, it's 5.2. And for Saturn, it's 9.2. Five. So on average, Saturn is 9.5 times further away from the Sun than the Earth is. Mars is 1.5 times further away than the Earth is. Okay? So this is what we learn from Kepler's laws. They tell us this. By applying those laws and making observations of the sky, we can learn this. But what we don't know is what 1 AU equals. Now we know today what 1 AU equals. Okay. But, it, but at this point in time, after Kepler's laws were devised, people knew this, that Jupiter was 5.2 times further away from the Sun than the Earth is. But they didn't know what absolute distance that was. This is sort of like, you know, having a scale map of the United States, you know, and knowing that, you know, uh, little, the, the distance, you know, if you're driving from Atlanta to Los Angeles, Little Rock is about a third of the way. You would know that Little Rock is, you know, the distance to Los Angeles from Atlanta is three times further away than Little Rock, but you wouldn't know how many miles that is. All you would know is the ratios of distances. You wouldn't know absolutely how far that was. I could give you a map of the United States without a scale on it. You wouldn't know how big the country really is. That's kind of the deal with the solar system after Kepler. People knew what the relative sizes were right here in terms of AUs, but people didn't really know what exactly an AU is. Okay, they didn't know really how big was it. A thousand miles? Was it twenty thousand miles? Was it a billion miles? We don't. They didn't know. It took some fancy thinking and work to figure that out. Okay, and uh, it basically the way that it was done is by observing. Uh, let, me, let me draw it for you here. See if I can erase this. I'm very I'm very hesitant to erase this while making a video because. It, Racing this is kind of a pain. This is going okay though. I'm happy with this. So the question is, how can we know how far away the sun really is? Or the, yeah, the sun really is. How can we know really what an astronomical unit is? That is the question. And the first guess at this, the first one that was really correctly calculated uh, was done uh, by a fellow named um, Jeremiah Horrocks. And this was in England in 1639. Kepler was still alive. And what happened is that every now and again, we just passed a pair of these, um, Venus crosses in front of the sun. Okay. So that when we look at the sun, what we see is a little black spot, right? Here's the sun. This is the face of the sun here. What we see is a little black spot. And we see that little black spot moving across the sun. That's, that's Venus blocking the sunlight. That's known as a transit. So we sometimes see transits of Mercury sometimes transits of Venus, but Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn never come between the Earth and the Sun, so we never see transits of those. So what you see is a little shadow of the, of the planet passing across the face of the Sun. 
We observed the transit here at the observatory just a few years ago, the transit of Venus. It was pretty cool. Okay, so, no, it was actually, that was Mercury, not, not Venus. But by, by watching that shadow move across the face of the sun from two different locations on Earth, okay, you can tell how far away Venus really is. Okay, because from one place, Venus might look like it's, I mean, Venus might look like it's right there. But from another place, at the same time, oops, at the same time, somebody looking from a different point of view will see Venus right there. Because you're looking from a different reference point. It's like holding your thumb out and do this. Hold your thumb out in front of you, okay? And locate your thumb against a backdrop. Like right now, I'm covering the camera. Close one eye. Okay, do that first. Close your, say, your left eye and cover something on the distant wall with your thumb. Right now, my thumb is over the camera. Now, if I switch eyes, my thumb jumps to the right. If I look at the thumb out of my right eye, it's covering the camera, but I look at my thumb out of my left eye, it's over to the right of the camera. My thumb jumps back and forth. I can see I'm looking at it from two different locations, and as I do that, and as you do that, your thumb seems to jump back and forth. Same thing with Venus. And by, this is, this is that, this is that uh, process known as parallax. By seeing just how large that jump appears, you can determine the distance to the object, be it whether it's your thumb against the background object on a wall, or whether it's Venus against the background object of the sun. By seeing how much your thumb jumps, if you bring, oh, do try this too, now bring your thumb, bring your thumb closer in and play the same game again. The closer you bring your thumb, when you switch eyes, the more it jumps. When it's way out here, it jumps a little bit. When it's up close, it jumps a lot. So you can figure out using parallax, the bigger the jump is, is the bigger the parallax is, the closer the object is. And so it was by looking at Venus against the sun from two different locations on Earth that you, we could triangulate and determine the distance to Venus. And Jeremiah Horrocks did this for the first time during a transit in 1639, and he got that one AU was about, was it 60, about 60 million miles. Well, that was, uh, his observations were quite rough. His calculations were fine, but his observations were a little rough. It turns out that's low. But that's the right order of magnitude. You know, it turns out that the actual AU, as we all know, is 93 million miles. So he was wrong, but he wasn't terribly wrong. All right, he could have come up with 200,000 miles or, or, or 700 million miles. He got two-thirds of the answer. He was off by about 30%, 35%. Okay, so it was, a, you know, it, for, for the uh, observing uh, situation that he had and the knowledge that he had, uh, it was uh, an excellent estimate. But this is, this is the right number here. Okay, so now that we have the AU, we can now determine the actual absolute distances to each one of these planets here. What I want to leave you with from this lecture is this. Oftentimes when you look at pictures of the solar system, posters, you know, educational materials that talk about the solar system, they, they all make it look like the planets are all nice and squished up together. But this is a huge distance a vast distance. It's way, 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 way more than the diameter of the Earth itself. So what I want you to do is to watch the next video, which is not my own. It's uh, one that was created by some folks out in the Black Rock Desert who built a scale model of the solar system to give you an idea of just how large the solar system is relative to the planets themselves and just how much empty space there is even in the solar system. These images that you see of the Sun and all the planets nestled around it with their little orbits very misleading. So watch the next video. It's wonderfully produced. Enjoy it. It's called To Scale the Solar System.
enjoy it. And I'll see you back in video 24.